this is the bug that I'm going to show you how to make today. Um, it's fully lined and if you finish off the inside, I'll show you how to do that really well, then you can even reverse it so you've got two different looks from the same bag. Um, I've chosen a length of strap that I can throw over my shoulder because I like that in a handbag, but if you wanted to make it smaller, then do smaller handles, longer, longer ones, obviously. Um, but you can vary the design as well. This is another bag I made from exactly the same idea, the same technique, uh, but this time I've put plastic rings on instead of the handles that are incorporated into the band around the top. So have a go with the bag, and then you could adapt it. You could do some top stitching, you could put some applique, you could put a pocket on the front or a zip pocket on the inside when you get used to the technique. So let's show you how you do it. This is the fabric I've chosen for the outside of my bag and then I've got a coordinating fabric for the inside of the bag. So I've got two rectangles in each of the fabrics and mine measure 19 inches across by 10 inches deep. So all four the same size. And then I've got four more pieces which are going to be the top part of the bag and these are all cut equal sizes and they measure 13 inches across by 4 inches deep and then finally two pieces of fabric for the handles and these will measure 4 inches deep and they are about 21 to 22 inches in length. Cut those longer if you wanted a longer handle. This is going to be just the length to go over your shoulder as you saw earlier. Now the first thing I did here was to put interfacing on the back of the straps so that's just an iron-on fusible interfacing like you do for dressmaking. And I've put that onto the back of all four of those pieces that go at the top, just to give them a bit more substance because I want them to keep their shape. Not in the main part of the bag, that's not important. Then what I'm going to do is do the handles first, just to get those out of the way. And you can probably see I've pressed with an iron both sides into the centre. And then I'm going to fold that in half and sew just down the edge, just with a top stitch, quite close to the edge. And I'm just using a straight stitch, you could use a zigzag or a decorative stitch if you wanted to. And of course pin this if you find it easier, I'm, I'm not too bad at sewing in a straight line without pinning. So keep those folded together and sew straight down the edge. Now you will see these stitches, so it's important to keep those nice and straight. So I'm using the inside part of my foot as a guide so that the stitches are all the same distance from the edge of the fabric. And this is an easy way of making a handle because it makes it nice and sturdy but you don't have any uh, raw edges so nothing's going to fray. And you don't have to sew a tube and turn it inside out. Now, for no reason apart from I think it looks more balanced, I'm going to do the same top stitching down the other side just to finish that off. I think it looks more professional. So the same distance away from the edge, and I'm just going to run those stitches all the way down the side. because you've got two handles. Now put those out of the way and we're on to the next section. So next up I want to make the base of my bag a little bit rounder. So I'm going to turn all of my fabric over onto the wrong side. And then to make the, the circle shape, you might be able to cut through all four pieces in one go if your fabric's not too thick. Mine's just um, like quilting cotton, patchwork cotton. So I should be able to do those in one go. But to make the round shape, I've got a plate. I'm going to put that, so it's just an eight inch T plate, up to the two corners there. 
and draw a semicircle and then do that on the opposite side. through all four layers. If you need to do it separately if your fabric's thicker then do so. As long as they're all the same that's fine. Like so. Now take each layer one by one and on the inside of the top section I fold that in half make a crease line with my finger and then I've just drawn a little mark where the centre is so again do that on all four pieces I'm going to do that simply by measuring against the previous one just on the back side so you don't see the, the pen mark on the right side of your fabrics and then do the same with your top sections which again have been interfaced. Do this on all four pieces. So fold in half, crease and just make a little pen mark. And the reason for that is that I want these two pieces to line up centrally. Which I do now. So for now I'm going to pin the two centre pieces together. This isn't how it's going to be sewn, this is purely so I can get the creases right. Then I'm going to push the edge of my fabric up to the edge so those two pieces meet. And do the same on the opposite side. If I turn my fabric over the right way, you'll see my bag starting to take shape. So I need the centre in the centre, the edges on the edges. Then I'm just going to put a couple of creases in, or pleats in, by hand. And I'm going to judge that by eye where I think they're going to look good. But by pinning the edge and the centre, you've got the same amount of fabric on both sides. Now I need to keep these straight. I don't want the whole thing flaring out, I want to keep them like a box pleat, um, straight down like that, and put a couple of pins in, and then do the same on the other side, but I'm going to have the pleats pointing in the opposite direction so they look symmetrical. Now I'm just kind of doing this again by eye. If you want it to be exact, then do measure those and make sure they're the same distance. But that looks okay to me. Like that. So you can see the shape of the bag taking shape now. So I'll need to take off the pins from the centre and the edges. So there's my bag, take the top section and fold it back so the two pieces are face to face and repin it because this is what I'm actually going to sew to start with. So making sure my two central marks are lined up together and the edges are lined up together and then the creases should just fit perfectly in between because they're all the same length now. The same on the other side. One in the centre. And then I'm going to do a straight stitch about a quarter of an inch from the edge to hold those two together. And quite a small stitch because I want this to be secure. So back tack a few stitches first just to make sure your stitches aren't going to come undone. 
and then stitch straight across the top. And then a few back tack stitches on the other side. And that's what the first panel should look like. So you can take out your pins, of course, where all your pleats have been. And then you'll need to repeat this for the other side of the outer layer of the bag and for the two pieces of the lining. So we've got four pieces like this now, two with the lining and two with the outer layer. Um, the only thing I'm going to do now is to put some top stitching across the top here because I think when you see top stitching it makes the project look more professional. If you were to see um, a bag in a shop, whether it's a leather bag or a fabric bag, they're normally finished off with top stitching. All I'm going to do here is to hold the, place, the pleats in place. You know I said I like them to sit down, not fan out, because this top stitching is going to help to keep those in place as well. Um, you could if you wanted to, before you, you get to this stage, put some top stitching over the top here, um, but it's not really necessary to hold the pleats. So again, I'm just going to sit those square, pin them in place, and so um, just with um, a straight stitch on the sewing machine, on all of the pieces that I've done the top stitching to, I've made sure that the um, the section that's interlined is facing downwards so that all the seams are facing in the di right direction and because you're going to see this I'm going to take it a little bit slower and they're quite small stitches and I'm just pulling this apart slightly so that I get a perfect line here. I don't want to get a pinch or a crease because it'll uh, alter the way that the bag sits. So again I'm just using the inside of my foot as a guide. It doesn't matter how wide these stitches are away from the hem, as long as it's a uniform line all the way across. So I said, these, these are stitches that are going to be seen. Um, if you've got embroidery stitches on your machine, you could do a fantasy stitch or a, a zigzag stitch if you like, or maybe you've got a, a leaf design or stars or whatever will match with your fabric. But I think my fabric is so busy, I'm just going to keep it simple with a straight line. There, so take the pins out, and that's nice and flat and neat. Now I'm going to put the handles on, and I've already measured three inches from either side. These could be at, at, at any point that you want them to, really. If you wanted the straps further towards the edge of the bag, uh, then do so, but it's just so that they, that they sit uh, equidistant from either side, so it looks um, more balanced. So this is my outer side, so I'll take my handle and I'm going to pin it at that three inch point with the edge of the handle just meeting it with the edge of this top bit. Now make sure that your handle lies flat as you bring it around and do the same to the other side. So there's my three inch mark, they're lined up and just pin that in place. And make sure that they sit square, not, not at an angle, because that will affect the way that the, the bag hangs. Then you'll take your second piece, this is the lining, so remember I've got one piece of the outer bag and the piece of the lining, and put that face to face, making sure that your seams line up here. And at the other side... And I'm going to sew this all the way across the top, about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Now it's not, you don't have to sew at a quarter of an inch, but whatever distance you sew on the hem, you need to sew for all of your hems. And I just find a quarter of an inch easy because that's the size of the foot that I have on my machine. So I can use the edge of the foot as a gauge. So I'm sewing all the way across the top, sandwiching those straps in between. There's the bulky bit. finish off at the other side. So I'm going to take my pins out Oops, gone. and open it up. This is what it looks like and that's how my bag's going to look. So that's my lining and that's the outside of my bag. 
Now to put the two pieces together, press this at this point. I'll just do, do this with my finger because I don't have an iron to hand. I'm just going to tuck the handle in. I've already done the other side. Took that handle in and I'm going to sew these together. But I'm going to start from the centre points because I need this seam to match up. Because when the bag's turned inside out, this is the bit that you're going to see, so this is really important. So take these two seams and pin them together. And I'm going to have the hems facing in the same direction. And pin there. I need these two seams to match. So I'll pop a pin there. This is where I was saying that the same seam allowance is really important. Because if you don't have the same seam allowance, mine was a quarter of an inch, remember, then these seams won't match and your bag will look a bit odd, a bit homemade. It doesn't matter so much about the lining, you won't see inside there, but this is the important bit. So again, matching the, the seams at the top of the bag and facing those in the same direction, just like it did on the other side. That seam. Make sure the handles are out of the way. We don't want to um, we don't want to sew those into the seams. That's it won't be a bag. Like that. Okay, now if you want to pin all the way around you can do, but for time's sake I'm not going to. I've done the important bit. And I'm just going to do that straight stitch all the way around the bag, apart from a section about four inches wide at the bottom of the lining, which is where I'm going to turn it. And if you want to take your pins out as you go, then do feel free. I've left mine just out of the way of the needle, so they're not, it's not going to hit. And again, with that same seam allowance, if you can, just join together all the way around the two sections here. across the bottom is matching it nicely the important bit where all of those seams need to meet. Straight across there. Quite a few layers of fabric we're going through at this point, so if your machine's not up to it, then just take it slowly over the big, uh, the big lumps of fabric. And then around to the lining. Keeping those sides matched up. Then I'm going to leave a gap across the bottom. I'm going to back stitch just a couple of times because there will be some strain on the stitches when I turn the bag the other way around. And then we're back on the, the home front. going to turn my bag the other way around. I'll take my pins out first. Um, that's what my bag is looking like now. The one thing I need to do um, before I turn it is to just snip into the curved areas um, quite close to the stitches and around about half an inch apart. Just put some little cuts in there and it'll help the fabric 
to stop puckering when you turn it the other way around. That goes for anything that you sew that has a curve in it, whether it's a curve on the outside or a curve on the inside. But when you think about it, if you're going to turn something inside out and it's curved, all of this fabric's got to bunch up somewhere on the inside. If you just put a little slit in there, it overlaps. And if you really want to be pedantic, cut a V-shape in there. And that'll make it even smoother. Um, that's something particularly if you're dressmaking and you, you need to have that perfect finish. But mine's just a bag, so I'm not too fussed. And again, on the right side of my bag. Just ease that around. Doesn't matter on the straight sides, but it does make a difference on a curved side. Like so. And then where I left the hole in the bottom of the lining is where I'm now going to turn it the right way around. So everything's pulled through the hole. There's the handles. Right, so, so I'll just push out the shape of the bag on the right side. Um, and again, you could press at this point. I wouldn't press this flat now. If you've got um, a ham, you could put that inside or a rolled up towel so you keep the shape of the seam without, without flattening it. Let's push out the shape of the lining. Now, if this is going to be a reversible bag, at this point, I would take the opening, crease it with my fingers, and then do a ladder stitch by hand to close that opening over so that you don't see it. If it's not going to be a reversible bag, and I'll do it just for speed's sake this time, do the same thing, fold those two sides in, lay it under your machine, and as close as you can to the edge, oops, in you go, and just do a straight stitch across the bottom. If, if you really don't want it to be seen and you want it to be perfect, then do this by hand. But because I'm doing this for speed, I'm just going to close that gap together with my machine and cut off the threads so it keeps it nice and neat. Next thing to do is to push the lining inside the bag. And remember I was saying earlier on it's important to have the seams around the top edge meeting perfectly. This is where it's going to show. So if it's not reversible, then you won't really see too much of the inside of the lining. This is the important bit. These seams here need to match. That seam there needs to match. The seam at the other side all needs to match to give you a really professional finish. The last thing that I'm going to do, I'd normally press that now, but the last thing I'm going to do is to just put some more top stitching all the way around. I've left this till the end because I want to... Um, if I'd have done it beforehand, then the stitches go into the seam there, and I think top stitching over the top of the seam looks more professional. So I'm going to take my um, arm off the machine. If you've got a free arm, then I'd use it at this point. So take your accessory compartment off your sewing machine. And I'm going to start at the side seam. So normally I'd, I'd have pressed that. And make sure the seam's flat. And I'm going to do a top stitch just about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, making sure that my handles again aren't trapped in my sewing. A bit slower. Helping the machine over the bumps. Because there's a lot of fabric to get through here. And keeping that top seam, this is where it's easier to press it first, but keeping that top seam flat and even. So you don't see the inside from the outside. Particularly if it is reversible. It needs to be both the same both sides. Just feed the bag through, keeping this flat. Um, if you're not too confident then you could always do a tacking stitch by hand all the way around. No, good over the bump. Keep the handles out of the way. And again, this is another stitch that's going to be seen, so try and keep it even. 
and try and keep it the same distance from the edge all the way around. I've just got a loose thread there and cut that off. That's where I started my top stitching. And end up in the same place that you started and just match those stitches up perfectly. That's why this kind of foot is um, a good one to use because it's got a, a transparent section in the centre so you can see where your seams and your stitches are lining up. So just snip away the excess thread and there we have a fabulous little bag which you can make in any colour to match anything in your wardrobe and again if you choose to you could even make that reversible. Use completely contrasting fabrics. So you could go from daytime to evening time with the one bag. <laughs>